Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Um, I had someone ask me to do a video on uh, redoing lampshades, so um, I had a few lamps that I needed to make over and decided to just do a few lamps in this video and also the shades. Now, as you can see, this lamp is very worn. Uh, it's just, the color is not popular anymore, but mainly it's just not in really good condition. But I really love the colors in the picture on the front. So I'm not going to paint that. I'm going to leave that and let that be the inspiration for my color. Now, um, I'm using the product Slick Stick. And if you watch me long, that you see that I use this a lot on glass. And that's because glass is such a slick finish. And slick stick is made to help paint stick to those slick finishes. So I went over the whole thing with one coat of the slick stick. And uh, everything except uh, for the picture in the center. The rest I covered up with slick stick. And then I went over the very bottom and uh, the little handles on the side and uh, the area just around the picture in the color buttercream. So I gave it two coats of the color buttercream and then I mixed a green for the rest of it. And so I mixed half um, of the color rebel yellow and half kudzu to get the green that I end up putting on this. And both of those are um, Dixie Belle colors, and also this buttercream is a Dixie Belle color. And I love the fresh color green that I got mixing those two. And once I got this painted, it took co two coats of this green. Once I got it painted and let it dry well, then I, I went over this with a clear sealer. And uh, I used one that was uh, a gloss sealer so that it would look more like it had came that way. And this is the shade that I'm going to make over for it. So I just stripped it down and took everything off of it and painted it white. So that, as it turns out, this is going to be uh, covered completely. But I wasn't sure at this point that I was going to cover it completely. So I painted that. The metal on it white so that any if any of that showed it wouldn't stand out now what i didn't get on film is i just took a sweater and stretched it over that lampshade and then cut around the top and the bottom and uh, glued that in place and that's all that i did on this now you're going to have a little bit of pleating at the top i just kind of let it naturally pleat and then uh, glued it uh, on underneath the shade and now I'm going to trim it out by adding some different laces Now every time I do a project that requires uh, me using this vintage lace and I'm, I'm able to pull out this beautiful lace uh, I think about my friends Myra and Laura Jo that uh, were so generous to send me a bunch of vintage lace It's just made crafting so much funner so now at this point you could add whatever you whatever you want um, because that sweater base will be enough to cover this well and it looks pretty on its own but obviously I want to make this more shabby chic so um, so I'll just keep adding lace until I get the look that I want now on this one I wanted the lampshade to be a little longer so I added the longer lace first and then you can just kind of layer it up until you get the look that you like. Um, I don't want this to be plain, but I definitely don't want it to be overdone. So I'm going to be adding something to the body of the lampshade also. Now there are so many things that you could do with lampshades. There's just a number of ways to make these things over. And uh, a lot of them are very simple, and then obviously some of them can get pretty technical. Uh, I wanted to do some simple ones here, and um, I didn't want to just do a bunch of lamp shades. I wanted to uh, make sure that I had some lamps to go on them, because 
lampshades are not the easiest to store and um, so I just kind of like to make them to go with my lamps as I go rather than trying to store them to put on lamps as I find them. So now I'm going to put some lace around the top and layer that lace around the bottom and I'm not going to make you watch all that. You know it's just as simple as gluing it on and obviously I'm just using hot glue here. So once I get all the lace trim on it then I'm just going to take a small doily and glue it right in the center of the front of the lampshade and that's all that i'm going to do to dress that up except i will be adding a uh, shabby rose to the center because uh, i want to bring some of this warm color to uh, the center of the uh, lampshade too so i could have done that with the doily uh, but i decided i didn't want the doily to to um I guess I didn't want it to contrast too much to this. So I just put a white doily on here. And then after I glued that on, then I just built a little um, shabby rose right in the center of it in, in the color of the off-white trim. Now, if you've not seen me make these shabby roses, um, then I just tie a knot in the end of a strip of fabric that I've just torn. And then I just keep twisting it and gluing around that knot. And you can, you can make this as large as you want, or uh, I'm not gonna be going very large on mine, but uh, you can make it as large or as small as you want when you get it the size that you want. Uh, then you just clip that off and glue it down with some hot glue and you're finished now When I'm making these I like to change directions that I'm twisting every now and then and that will just kind of add some extra dimension But as you can see I use that off-white there to kind of bring that color down a little bit and I feel like that was enough So I feel like that transformed it a lot, but still I was still able to keep that beautiful picture in the center so this was my first um, lamp and then for the next one this one is, is not an antique one at all but um, it's got a little age on it because there where i'm holding my hand that's got some staining i don't know if it's from nicotine or what it's from uh, but i just cleaned it up well and i'm gonna i'm gonna paint it in the color sea glass and i'm also gonna paint that that yellow part there in the color sea glass and that will freshen this up and update it and um and i think it'll really help the look of this lamp so i give this two coats of the color sea glass i didn't bother using the slick stick on this one because uh, I, don't, I think this was some sort of metal on the bottom so I wasn't going to have to worry about it not sticking. So this got two coats of the color sea glass. And then I let it dry well. And then I'm going to be using a white wax on this. Now there's not a whole lot of detail to bring out with that white wax. But I feel like um, it, it, for one thing, will tone this color down just a little bit. But also there is some detail for it to show up in and i think it's still worth doing the white wax on and as you can see it does um i was happy that i ended up doing it because i was a little on the fence about it but uh, it really did make just enough of a subtle difference that it really helped change the look up a lot and I absolutely love this color sea glass, and I use it a lot, but even more so, I like the look of it with this white wax. Now, I forgot to mention that I did do a clear sealer on this also before I did the white wax, just to make sure that the white wax didn't, um, didn't change up this color too much because you can wipe it off a lot easier if you do that clear coat first. And then now for this shade, I'm going to give it a different look. I'm going to start out by ripping everything off this one also and painting this one white. 
Now, I've cut some strips from an old lace panel, and that's what I'm going to be tying on here along with uh, some sheets that I that I stained and um, torn into have torn into strips. That's what I'm going to be using on this. I don't want to use all my lace trim up uh, because this would take a lot. So this is where you need to um, make your own by just cutting up um, lace panels or old lace tablecloths or just something that um, you don't have to worry about using a lot of. Now I'm going to tie some of these in this white lace and then I'm going to be uh, the sheets that I stained uh, by using watered down paint actually is um, what I'm also going to be tying on here. So I just took um, a bowl of water and then I just put um, probably about a quarter a cup of paint in it or maybe an eighth of a cup of paint, not, not very much. And, uh, and then I just put my, my sheets in there and just um, made sure to get that paint in them good. And then I rang them out and hang them up to dry. That's how I stained my sheets. So um, again, I'm just tying all this on. So I don't worry about those knots. I want them to show because that's gonna add a lot of character and a lot of texture to my lampshade. Now, I'm not doing anything special at all here. I'm just tying these on and cutting, cutting the excess off. And not all of the excess, because again, I want that texture, so I leave a little bit past the knot. But I'm just gonna tie them. I don't worry with tying uh, them in between these little sections I'm just tying these around on the big sections and then I'm going to do a different technique with my strips of sheet and I'll show you that in the next step and because this is a shabby style you don't have to worry about perfection here you don't have to worry with um, a certain pattern and and I don't worry with it counting how many I'm putting on I'm just putting on some of these and then some of the uh, the color sea glass that I use my same paint to stain my fabric with so that it would make sure to match and you could use curtain shears here uh, or any kind of fabric that's lightweight. You don't want to go with the heavier fabric here. Now, this is my sheet that I stained. And as you can see, it's kind of an uneven color, which I really love. So I tie the first, the start of it on, and then I wrap it around the next uh, little piece and then keep wrapping around each individual piece, keeping it tight to the top. Um, and th that's just a very quick way. Now, I could have done the whole thing like that, uh, but when you do the whole thing like that, you're going to have to glue one piece to the next because obviously you're not going to have a piece long enough to go all the way around this. But I just wanted those knots here and there, and that's why I didn't uh, just keep doing this and glue it. This is a lot quicker, especially if you were to use a wider strip of fabric. Um, this is a very simple way to do a lampshade, and it has a really pretty look, and then you can add extra embellishments if you want extra texture. But I wanted those knots on this one, so now when I ran out here of fabric, because I'm not doing a continuous, continuous wrap all the way around, I just tied a knot in the end of it and then cut that so that the length of it was similar to these other knots that I have. Uh, but then I just started another piece and just wrapped that. And so I wrapped it a little ways down. And then when I felt like it needed more of the lace, then I tied more of the lace pieces. So I just kind of did a combination on this until I had the whole thing covered. And then when I had the whole thing covered, then I, then I just started tying pieces on the bottom. And I left a tail on those on purpose just to um to give it some texture at the bottom and just kind of let those hang 
Now, because I didn't measure mine exactly, some of them I trimmed up a little bit when I was finished just to make sure that um, it wasn't too uneven. I didn't want it to be exact, but I didn't want it to be too uneven. And although this is not a necessarily a dressier one there's a lot of shabby on this one i really love the look of this one and it lets a lot of light through without just ab absolutely showing that bulb so that was my second one finished and then for the last one uh, i'm gonna make over another one similar to the first one but with it i'm gonna be painting the whole thing so I start with this green lamp, and again, it's got some age on it. I'm not crazy about these colors, uh, and a lot of you may love this one. It doesn't really have any visible damage on it, but it's just not something that I feel like goes in my store. So I'm going to put a cut, one coat of slick stick on this one and let it dry well, and then I'm going to be painting this one in the color tea rose. And again, that's a Dixie Belle color. Now, I just love the color tea rose, and, um, and I'm going to be uh, doing some decoupage on this lampshade. So, the decoupage that I'm going to be doing is going to have some roses that are this color. So, that's the reason that I'm using this color on this. And, um, again, I'm going to paint the whole thing. Uh, but because there is going to be that little section in the front that looks like it needs something, then I'm just going to take, in this case, I took my hot glue and just made a mold, uh, just like I do my clay molds, just by putting hot glue into my, into my silicone mold. And you don't have to use any cornstarch or anything. You just put that glue in there, and then once it dry you just pull it out and uh, it will be somewhat flexible so then I just took some um, and I did this I did that after the fact so that's why I'm painting it first I wasn't sure at this point what I wanted to do but that's what I end up doing is making that glue mold and then uh, I use tight bond and uh, secure that right there in that circle on the front. And it's just a big rose is what I end up putting there. Um, but, and then I, I make sure this is all dry because I had to tie something around it to secure it on as it dried. Um, and, um, and that's why I needed to make sure that this was really dry. Uh, but I still had some pull up, um, and I still had some areas that wanted to pull up around the edges. So uh, what I did to fix that was once it was dry well, I took some of my air dry clay and uh, just kind of pressed it in the little crack, the little seam that was left at the top and around some of the sides, and I filled it in really well with that um, with the air dry clay. And then once I painted it, you could never tell that it, it had ever tried to come off. So that was how I fixed that issue. And you can see here where it kind of pulled up. Uh, but this is before I added that air dry clay. So I just added that once this paint was dry. And then painted over that again. And it completely fixed the problem. And now it's dry again. So I have at this point... Uh, I took it outside and sprayed it with a clear matte finish and let that dry. And now I'm adding the white wax on this because, again, I don't want to change this color up much, but I want that white wax to really get into that detail and make it pop. So as you can see here, where I added that clay, it just took care of that problem altogether. So anytime you have a clay mold that doesn't, uh, that wants to pull or has pulled away slightly as it dried and you don't like that little seam, obviously you wouldn't, uh, then just take some more clay and just kind of rub it down in that seam and then take your finger and just kind of rub that smooth and it will, it will make it look a lot more seamless. But I love how this white wax is looking on this and I love how it's pulling out all that detail in the rose and the trim. 
And even though this is a solid color, it still has plenty of detail. And now I'm going to fix the shade. And this is one that uh, was somewhat dirty. And I cleaned it, uh, but didn't get all the dirt off of it. So uh, decoupage, I felt like it was a good idea for this. Because uh, the shade was good and sturdy. There was not any dry rotting that would cause it to pull apart. Uh, and I love the color of it. Uh, but I just wanted to um, distract from any staining that would be on this. And I thought if I decoupage this and did a little bit of script stamping, that would take care of the whole issue. And it would really go with this lamp. So it's a choice that I'm glad that I made because I think it really worked. Now, obviously, I'm just using the outer layer of a napkin. If you haven't ever decoupaged with a napkin, you know, uh, you need to know that you pull the two, uh, layers. there's usually two layers that don't have the print on it. And you just need to separate that and only decoupage with the outer layer that has the image on it. So I've torn out around these roses because I want that really organic look. And I'm just using plenty of Mod Podge and Mod Podging onto this. Now, I had never Mod Podged on a lampshade before. Never had I um, actually decoupaged on any fabric. So um, I will say that uh, it was a little bit tougher than decoupaging on a harder surface. Uh, and you do have to use more Mod Podge on this. You wanna make sure you get it good and wet. Um, that was the only issue that I had. Some places were a little harder to get it to stay down. So uh, keep that in mind that you have to kind of work with it. And you know, when you're working with a napkin, you have to be very careful that you don't tear up your image. So uh, this was a little bit of a challenge, but, um, but I would definitely do it again because I really like the look that I got. And as you can see here, although it's a little harder, it's really not very difficult. So um, I like to place these randomly. And if, if you wanted to, you could cover the whole thing in the roses. But what I did was I put the majority of it around the bottom and then I put a little bit around the top. And then any of that inner section uh, that looked stained at all, or maybe you could even see where the Mod Podge was, then I just took my one of my script stamps and um, I just um, did some very light stamping. And I actually did that with my uh, antiquing ink instead of my regular stays on because I wanted it to be faint. So um, with all that, it worked and I really liked the look that I got on the shade. And the stamping was also a little more difficult uh, just because it's kind of hard to put pressure on it, but I didn't have to worry with putting much pressure on it because I kind of wanted this to be faint, so it worked out. And then once I got enough of my stamping on it, then I trimmed out around the top and the bottom with some lace. And, uh, and then this lampshade was finished. And this was another that I just really layered it up uh, so that my lampshade had plenty of length on it and had um, plenty of texture. And then I decided to make a hang tag to go with this lamp because I had that, um, the napkin, some pieces of it left over. So I thought that was a good opportunity to do a hang tag that matched perfectly with the lamp. And I'm starting with cardboard here that I've already painted one coat of a light color of paint on. And now I'm roughing up those edges and I'll use my antiquing ink and antique around the edges. Now I got some more hang tags in the mail today, so I'm gonna be showing those at the end of this video. Um, my, my hang tag wall is starting to look good, so um, maybe the next, in my next video, I'll show what it's starting to look like. So I'm just adding some script stamp here uh, to layer up behind this. 
Now, I said before that I really like cardboard, especially a thin cardboard as a uh, hang tag base. I think it just works so well. Um, but I've been watching a lot of your hang tags and I'm loving uh, some of the bases that you guys use. So I think the sky is the limit with these. Now I'm antiquing around each layer. I just like that look. You don't have to have that vintage look, but I just really like it here. So, um, and then I'm just layering this rose on here and I'll add some lace and some buttons and uh, keep this one kind of simple. Now, as you can see, I decided to add a little bit of a book page behind this and uh, it's a very small piece. You don't have to add much. You just want enough to show just to add a little bit more layering. And now I'm gonna glue all that down and then add some lace and buttons and, um, and make this one more of a shabby chic look. And again, just glue each piece down where you can at least see part of each layer and that just creates that layered look. And then I always like to add some texture to it and I do that usually with laces and buttons. And I think I even add some shabby roses to this one. And now I'm going to show you guys some of the um, hang tags from my viewers. Now this first hang tag comes from Kathy Bailey from California. And I love that this one is about perspective. Because the little uh, saying on the tree says, The tree which moves some to tears of joy in the eyes of others only a green thing that stands in the way and that is so true it's just all about how you look at things but i think she did such a great job on this i love the shabby roses and i love the art on the back i think it's just gorgeous 
to use beautiful vintage trim and um, I just love all the art on this this one is so my style and of course it's made out of a cardboard base which I love that this one is just absolutely beautiful the next one is signed C Pilgrim from North Carolina so um, this one is just really pretty too she's I love that it has scripture on it uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure, Matthew 13, 44. Uh, again, I just love meaning on these hang tags, and I love uh, it when faith is added. And she said she wasn't very good at these. This was her first try, but I think it is absolutely beautiful. I don't think you can tell at all that she is not a pro with this. It, it looks so pretty. Now, these next two are from Deb from Indiana. Uh, she didn't make it clear. I'm not sure if she wanted her last name mentioned, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. But she said these were her first two that she's done, and, um, and she's not been into crafting very long, but uh, you, you sure can't tell it. I think she did an incredible job. I love all this dimension that she added. And um, I love how sturdy her tags are and the buttons and lace. She did a wonderful job. Again, you would never know that she wasn't, uh, that she hadn't done many of these. She did a really good job. Uh, thanks, guys. I love all of these. And I get so excited when I get to open some new ones. And I hope you guys have enjoyed them as much as I have. And at this rate, my wall's going to be covered before long. I'm so grateful at how many of you have gotten involved. It just, it's been such a blessing to me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.